Hello there everyone, what is going on? Ball in Place here, bringing you the episode preview of the next episode of Dragon Ball Super. Now I know what you're wondering, Ball and you've never done a video like this before, what the heck are you doing? Now, I've been following Dragon Ball Super since it started, I've been a fan since the beginning, and I usually don't watch anime sub, I usually wait till the dub comes out, but for Dragon Ball Super, I decided to watch the sub, so I've been keeping up and I've been watching, and you know, I know a lot of people do this, where they take the episode preview and they break it down and I wanted to try to sort of like you know give it a shot sort of see what I can pull out of the preview for the next episode and since this is the last episode the future of the Dragon Ball franchise as well from the preview so let's just go sort of like get into this see the preview and see what we have going on okay so let's, let's go ahead and start this let's start this guys all right so the preview starts here with Jiren now, Jiren here is looking mad. Like, you see his face. He's clearly not in the mood for this. He does not have time to deal with Universe 7. Like, you know, he thought he had won. He beat Goku. Ultra Instinct, like, I'm not going to say it failed because it didn't fail. But it, it took its toll on Goku at the wrong moment. Like, Goku just needed a few more seconds and he would have been over. Jiren would have been done for. But Jiren managed to last until Ultra Instinct took the toll on Goku. And he's mad because, like... You know, he, he he had won. He beat Goku. He was going to win. But then Frieza comes out of nowhere. And then and then my boy 17 comes back, you know? So, like, like, the, like the, he has reason to be mad. He's mad because of everything going on. And then he's also mad because, you know, last episode, or rather this episode, yesterday's episode, today's episode, it's like, you know, Goku was, like, pushing him. He got, he got pretty mad in this episode. Like, the maddest we've seen him. So it makes sense for him to be mad in this episode preview. He's frustrated. He's got a lot of things going on here, you know? Jiren, like, people say Jiren's a bland character. And, I mean, Jiren's not the best character out there. But, I mean, you know, he, he still has emotions. He's not as emotionless as people say he is. And so you can clearly see the frustration he has going on here. And this frustration, I think, is going to play a part in beating Jiren. I think that... They're going to use Jiren's anger against him because anger is, it's like, it's a common thing in Dragon Ball is anger. Anger is like a constant, like, you know, p anger can be used as a power up, sure, but at the same time, anger can sort of be used as a weakness because Jiren can't really focus, he's getting frustrated, he's going to make mistakes. And I think that's what they're going to use to be able to beat him since they can't beat Jiren with brute force. So, so let's, let's continue through the preview here. Let's continue a little bit more. So after that shot of angry Jiren, we get to see Android 17 pushing Jiren back with his energy blasts. Now I know everyone thought that 17 was done for, everyone thought he blew himself up and he was out. But I guess he's not. Like, I mean, the episode showed him alive and well. So, you know, he's still in this. He's still kicking. He's still fighting for Universe 7. And he's proven once again why he's the MVP of the tournament. Like, I mean, he doesn't have the most eliminations. That award doesn't go to him. But you don't need most KOs to be MVP. You gotta put in the most work to be MVP. And that's what 17 has done, you know. He's proven time and time again that he has contributed the most. He's saved the most people from elimination. He's taken down a bunch of Universe he's done his fair share of work his barrier has come in clutch over and over again so you know he's the MVP without a doubt and this episode preview continues to showcase that it shows how he's using his energy to push Jiren back because 17's a smart guy he knows he can't beat Jiren 17 cannot beat Jiren but what he can do is he can beat the clock there's only about 30 seconds left in the tournament of power so if he can beat the clock, if he can push Jiren back enough, if he can prevent himself and Frieza and Goku from being eliminated, they win through numbers. Seventeen is playing the mind game. He's being a smart guy. He knows how the tournament works and he's using that to his advantage. Jiren might not be able to be beaten with brute strength at this point because Mastered Ultra Instinct didn't have enough to go through. But they can still win the tournament of power because of how the rules work. Seventeen here is pushing Jiren back. He's using his smarts, and he's trying to beat the clock rather than beating Jiren. You know, that's how the guy became a park ranger, because he's a smart guy. He knows what he's doing. He's got a mentality, he pushes for it, and he's going for what he wants, you know. I think Seventeen has definitely earned that cruise ship, you know. At the beginning of Super, Bulma had her party on a yacht. I think she should just buy that yacht up and give it to Seventeen. He has earned that without a doubt because he's the MVP of the tournament. He's pushing forward. He's surviving against things that you wouldn't think Android Seventeen could survive against. But he's in it. He's living. He's my boy Seventeen. 
But you know, you know, no, I could, you know, I could talk about Seventeen for hours. But we gotta, we gotta keep going through this episode preview. So let's, let's keep going and let's see what's next beyond my boy Seventeen MVP of the TOP. Okay, next here we see Frieza. So this is the first time we see Frieza in action for like five episodes or so. You know, everybody, everybody's been sleeping on Frieza. Everyone's been like, oh, Frieza's not going to do nothing. But Frieza came back at the right moment. He saved Goku, and Frieza's going to come back with the plays. Now, the interesting thing to notice here is that Frieza isn't in golden form in this shot. When we saw Frieza at the end of the episode, he was in golden form. So that means, you know, he's not golden anymore. He loses the golden at some point in the episode. He was golden before, now he's not golden. Now he's normal Frieza. That means something has to happen to make sure that Frieza goes from golden form to normal form. Otherwise, why would the preview here show him to be in normal form? Now let's go next a little bit further. And then look, he's charging straight into Jiren. So this means Frieza's going head on. Now, if you look carefully at the attack that Frieza's doing, it is very reminiscent of the attack that Frieza did at the end of the Namek Saga against Goku before he got cut in half. So therefore, I think this is full power Frieza, something we haven't seen in a long time. I think Frieza isn't able to maintain his golden form anymore after going against Jiren for so long, so therefore he has to use full power Frieza. Now, I wonder if full power Frieza will be enough to take on Jiren, because if you think about it, golden Frieza is equal to Super Saiyan Blue, and Jiren is miles above Super Saiyan Blue at this point, but Jiren's also been weakened by mastered all transcend Goku. So maybe, you know, he's kind of on a lower playing field. Plus, his frustration is playing in the game. He has a lot of anger going on, so you don't really know what's going on Jiren's power. You don't know what game he's playing. And, you know, there's only 30 seconds left. Free doesn't ha Frieza doesn't have to beat him with full power. He just sort of has to, like, you know, weaken him, take him down, last 30 seconds, and get that wish. Okay, let's let's continue through the preview. Let's see what's next. Okay, okay, so there, a quick explosion there. That's probably the aftermath of Frieza charging in. You know, maybe he's trying to eliminate Jiren like that. Get him off of the ring. We don't know. Let's see. Let's see what we have to come. Okay, so that was, that there was just 17, you know, he's a little tired. We all thought 17 blew himself up, but I guess not, my bro. I guess, I guess 17's still in this, you know, 17, he's just charging in. MVP of the tournament right there, my man, 17, you know he's going in, coming in clutch. And then here we have Jiren going against the, those little energy explosion blasts. I think, I think that was 17's doing. That looked like 17's handiwork right there. It looks very reminiscent to what 17's been doing earlier in the tournament. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's keep, let's keep going. Let's keep going. And then there's the barrier, okay? 17 <laughs> building up the barrier to protect against Jiren. That looks to be Jiren's final desperate plot against Universe 7. I think Jiren there is going to be able to take them down, but he won't take them down, obviously, because they're the protagonist. So what I see ha what I see happening, what I predict happening right here, right here, this scene right here, what I predict is that Jiren will use the rest of his energy, the rest of his key, to launch this final devastating blow. And 17 will, of course, put up the barrier. Now, we know 17's barrier can't keep up with Jiren. We know that as a fact, because we saw that in previous episodes, that his barrier was not enough to prevent Jiren's attack. So what is the game here? Why is he trying a barrier again if that didn't work in the past? Why is he putting that up if he knows Jiren's attack goes right through it? Well, I think, I think he's trying to weaken Jiren's blast so that Frieza can survive. I think he's trying to protect Frieza because he knows Frieza is the last plan. Frieza's the last person left that can compete with Jiren. Because Frieza's on another level than 17. I mean, <laughs> 17 is still the MVP, don't get me wrong. 17 still, like, he's still living, he's still in it. But comparing 17 to Frieza, that's just, you, you can't do that. That's just not something you do. Okay, let, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. There, there, see, they're both working together to keep up the barrier. So I think that in and of itself is going to be able to make it strong enough to keep up with Frieza, or to keep up with Jiren. And now, Frieza, back to Frieza here. You'll see he's in golden form again. So is this before he goes full power or after? I'm predicting, I'm predicting this is before. I predict that Jiren uses his full energy on this attack. And the attack hits them. 17 puts up the barrier, but Frieza helps him keep the barrier up. And the attack is enough to get Frieza out of golden form, but not enough to eliminate him. And then that's when he goes full power as previously seen. And that's the flow of events I can call to sort of see happening Based on this, this is going to be the last episode, so they only have 20 minutes or so to wrap up the tournament. So there's not going to be that much fighting. It's going to be pretty quick, in and done. Frieza getting the job done with 17. 
Well, let's, let's, let's keep going. We still got a good bit of amount of the preview left. Switch it See, the barrier broke. Like I said, like I predicted, the barrier broke. So it's not enough to hold Jiren back. But it is enough to get Jiren to waste his energy. And that's what we need to do. We need to waste Jiren's energy so that that way Frieza can go in full power and just beat the heck out of him, you know? Everyone's been sleeping on my boy Frieza, but Frieza is gonna take them down. He's not the best villain in all Dragon Ball for nothing. Now, now these blue lights here, I have no idea what these could be. Like, like I mean, the rest of the preview, I got a pretty good idea what's going on, but what is this? Like, like is, it, is this the end of the tournament, or what is going on? I don't even know. Now, now I, know, I know here, I know here those blue lights turn into attacks. But I think that that's just an editing trick. I don't think that they're simply attacks. Because if they were just attacks, why do they look like something we've never seen before? We've never seen anything of that scale, of that size. And also, also going to the attack, moving on from the blue lights into the attacks. If we go towards the attack to Jiren, you see that Jiren is pretty weakened, you know? He's not, he doesn't have his incredible ultimate aura around him anymore. And these simple blasts are blowing him away. So I definitely think he wastes all of his energy on the attack that we see blocked by the barrier earlier. So Jiren wastes his power there. The barrier protects them. Frieza loses golden form, but still has enough energy to go full power Frieza, which is, I mean, full power Frieza is on level with Super Saiyan 1 Goku, but in Revival of F, we know that his base form has also gotten a huge power boost. He doesn't need golden to be on the level of Goku. I mean, that helps him compete with Goku's transformations, but his base form also received a lot of training from the six-month training. Plus, all of the time he spent in hell, his base form is still really strong. So you have to wonder, what does that do to his 100% form? If his base form is here, and Golden is here, I'd imagine 100% would be somewhere like in the middle, you know, right under Golden, not the same amount of energy. And then the problem of 100% again is controlling his key, but he has perfect key control now because of his time in hell. So I have to wonder if 100% is stronger than it was before. Now let's keep going through the preview. We're almost done here. We're about halfway done. Okay, so that was, a, that was a bad pause, but we see Jiren flying into the pillar of the Termin of Power, and we see him very weak, and then we see Goku. Now I thought Goku was done for at the end of this episode. He seemed pretty much done for. But if we know anything about Goku, we know Goku's not giving up easy. So Jiren is at his end here. He's got to keep up with 17. He's got to keep up with four power 100% Frieza. And he has to keep up with Goku. Now Goku's not that big of a deal. He's weakened from having the drain of Ultra Instinct. Like his body is just completely wrecked right now. But if we know anything about Goku, we know that that doesn't matter. So now here, this part right here, we got the twin Zenos. And in the background, that's clearly the Super Dragon Ball's dragon, and they're granting the wish. So I don't know if the Zenos are going to be the ones to distribute the wish, or if it's going to be the Grand Priest. That seems more like the Grand Priest role, but maybe the Zenos are just going to overlook the wish. Now, now this, this is really just a blind guess, but who wins the Tournament of Power? Our key players right now are Frieza, Seventeen, and Goku. I don't see Goku winning this, guys. I don't see Goku winning because he's done for. This episode just wrecked and drained him. And 17, I mean, 17's the MVP of the tournament, no doubt. He put in so much work, and he's done so much. But, I mean, 17, that barrier is going to be his final play. That's going to be his last gambit. After that barrier goes down, I don't see 17 doing much more work. And that leaves Frieza. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, you're just a Frieza fanboy. No, 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 no. I got the facts to back me up here. Frieza has been shown to be plotting something from the beginning of the tournament. There is no way that they're going to hype Frieza up and bring him back from the dead again, not to have him play a major role. No, Frieza is the one winning the tournament. Frieza's the one getting the wish, and Frieza's the one who's going to ultimately be in this scene with the Twin Zenos. Now, we know from earlier in the tournament that Frieza hates the Twin Zenos, you know? He hates their childlike demeanor and how that contrasts with their unlimited power. Frieza wants to be on top of the Zenos, so I wonder if his wish has anything to do with that. Now, we're almost done with the preview here. Dragon Ball Super, there's the Grand Priest. Like I said, the Grand Priest is probably the one giving the wish. Now look at that smile. Look at right there. 
Now, you can't see the Grand Prix smile because of the title, but the Grand Prix clearly is... Uh, see, that's an evil smile right there if I've ever seen one. There's no way that the Grand Prix isn't like... <laughs> The tournament worked out perfectly. Now, I know the, the Dragon Ball Super is ending, so there's no time to go into the Evil Angels theory. But the Grand Prix, man, he's still pretty shady. I still think he's up to something. There's no way the Grand Prix isn't hiding something behind the Tournament of Power. There's there's a bigger reason behind this. I think I think that Frieza winning the Tournament of Power will play a part in the Grand Priest scheme. I think he has a scheme. I think there's something going on. And I think the reason Dragon Ball Super is ending, the reason it's going on hiatus, is because the next incarnation of Dragon Ball is going to continue, and we're going to learn more about the Grand Priest and the angels and all of that, and how the Tournament of Power and Frieza are going to play a part in that major story. And then we also have the movie coming out in December. Now, the movie, we know nothing about it except the fact that it has something to do with who? That's right, Frieza. Frieza's a key part of the movie. So if Frieza's a part of the movie and Frieza's the one winning, it's clear here Frieza has some kind of connection in the future of Dragon Ball. He's going to be a key player. He's probably going to get revived as was promised at the beginning of the Terminal Power. So he's going to keep coming back. He's going to be that character that just keeps coming back. I do not see Frieza being reformed at all, because that's not in Frieza's character, but I definitely see Frieza being a key part of the tournament. Not, no, 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 my bad, my bad. Not the tournament, but the series as a whole, the franchise. Frieza is going to keep coming up and keep introducing new elements along with the Grand Priest. Now, that sounds kind of like a crackpot theory, I know, but we do have confirmation the movie in December has Frieza involvement. And like I said, why would they bring back Frieza if not to do something with him? So let's go through here, continue. I think there's just a little, a few more seconds left. There we have, the, um, we have Shin Supreme Kai, Elder Kai, and Beerus. Now look at their faces. They are clearly surprised, but not just surprised, they're scared. Look at their eyes. They're clearly scared. They're scared about what is going on. Now, that could be part of the tournament. That could be they're scared because, oh, we're going to get eliminated in a race. You know, maybe that's when Goku gets wrung out. And that's where they're all like, oh, no, we lost. But, but what if? What if that's actually their reaction to the wish? Going back to Frieza being the one to make the wish, what if that's them reacting to whatever Frieza is wishing for? Now, now, now look at the title here, okay? The Miraculous Conclusion, Farewell Goku, Until We Meet Again. Now, what does that title remind you of, guys? It reminds me of the ending of Dragon Ball GT. The title is very similar to the ending of GT. Heck, it's even reminiscent of the ending of Dragon Ball. So that means that there's going to be some sort of thematic tie-in to this. Now, what is there a tie-in to between Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT? I'll tell you what the tie-in is. It ends with Goku going to train. So who's Goku going to train with? I think Goku's going to train with none other than the Grand Priest himself. I think the Grand Priest is going to take an interest in Goku because of Goku attaining Ultra Instinct, and Goku's going to go to train with the Grand Priest at the end of it. And that will continue into the Grand Priest scheme that I mentioned earlier. So if Goku's training with the Grand Priest, what does that leave everyone else? Well, that leaves Frieza off to be revived and continue his schemes against the gods, and everyone else goes back to Earth to live out their time. Vegeta's probably going to continue his training with Whis in order to try to keep up with Goku's training with the Grand Priest. I don't know what's going to happen with the other universes. I, I want them to come back, but if Frieza's the one winning this, I don't see him bringing the other universes back. I mean, he didn't even get along with Frost, and they're both the same species. So, you know, you have to think Frieza's in this for himself. He's not bringing everyone back. So I don't see the other universes coming back. I'm sure they will somehow. I just can't think of a way how if we go with the hypothesized Frieza winning this. So end of the end of the preview. Let's finish this up. <laughs> just a final shot of Jiren being incredibly powerful and stuff. That there isn't too much. It just it ends it on a really powerful scene of him. But like I said, that Jiren powering up. That scene is going to lead into Jiren shooting the blast against the... Sorry about that. Jiren <laughs> shooting the blast against the barrier. And Jiren is going to be like, you think a barrier will work? But nah, it will work with the help of Golden Frieza and 17. Because 17 is still the MVP. So that has been my analysis for the preview. Now... Let's ride into my review of the episode, uh, guys. No, we're ending this right now. 